Today's lesson is on inequalities in one triangle. Read over the learning goal on the scale. Find where you are on the scale before we start the lesson. The angles and sides of a triangle have special relationships that involve inequalities. The comparison property of inequality says that if A equals B plus C and C is greater than 0, then A is greater than B. Let's assume for a minute that B is 1 and that C is 2. If A equals B plus C, then A will equal 1 plus 2, or 3. Since A equals 3, then it is greater than B, which equals 1. Take a look at the proof of the comparison property of inequality below. The comparison property of inequality allows us to prove the corollary to the triangle exterior angle theorem. The corollary states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of each of the remote interior angles. So let's say, for instance, that the measure of angle 2 is 60 degrees and the measure of angle 3 is 70 degrees. Then the measure of angle 1 would equal the sum of 60 and 70 or 130 degrees. Since 130 is greater than 60 degrees, and 130 is greater than 70 degrees, then the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 3. Take a minute to look over the proof of the corollary. In example 1, we will apply the corollary. In the diagram, why is the measure of angle 2 greater than the measure of angle 3? Since side BC is congruent to side DC, we know triangle BCD is an isosceles triangle. That means the measure of angle 2 is congruent to the measure of angle 1. Since the measure of angle 1 is an exterior angle of triangle ABD, its measure is equal to the sum of its remote interior angles 3 and 4. So the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 3. Since the measure of angle 2 is congruent or equal to the measure of angle 1, I can substitute the measure of angle 2 in for the measure of angle 1. So the measure of angle 2 is greater than the measure of angle 3. Pause the video and do you try number 1. In the diagram, why is the measure of angle 5 greater than the measure of angle C? Well, since angle 5 is an exterior angle to triangle DAC, and angle 3 and angle C are its remote interior angles, then the measure of angle 5 would be greater than either of the remote interior angles, so it's greater than the measure of angle C. This is by the corollary to the triangle exterior angle theorem. We can use the corollary to the triangle exterior angle theorem to prove the following theorem. If two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the larger angle lies opposite the longer side. So if the length of segment XZ is greater than the length of segment XY, then the measure of angle Y is greater than the measure of angle Z. If we look at the side lengths of the triangle below, we can tell which angle is the largest. Since side AB is the longest side, the angle opposite that side, angle C, is the largest. Since side CB is the smallest side or the shortest side, we know that the measure of angle A would be the smallest angle. In example 2, we will use theorem 5-10. A town park is triangular. A landscape architect wants to place a bench at the corner with the largest angle. Which two streets form the corner with the largest angle? Since we know the largest angle will lie opposite the longest side or the longest street, we want to look for the street that has the longest length. Since Hollingsworth Road is 175 yards, it is the longest road that forms the triangle for the park. So the angle opposite that road is going to be the largest angle. This angle is formed by MLK Boulevard and Valley Road. Pause the video and do you try number two. The landscape architect also wants to place a drinking fountain at the corner with the second largest angle. Which two streets form the corner with the second largest angle? We know the second largest angle will be opposite the second longest side. 
Since Valley Road is 120 yards, which is shorter than Hollingsworth Road, but longer than MLK Boulevard, Valley Road will be opposite the corner with the second largest angle. So this angle, the angle formed by MLK Boulevard and Hollingsworth Road, will be the second largest angle. For theorem 511, if two angles of a triangle are not congruent, then the longer side lies opposite the larger angle. So if the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle B, then side BC will be longer than side AC. In order to prove this theorem, we need to use indirect reasoning. Take a minute to look over the proof of theorem 511. In example 3, we will use theorem 511. We want to put the sides of triangle TUV in order from shortest to longest. We know that the shortest side will lie opposite the smallest angle and that the longest side will lie opposite the largest angle. The problem is we are given two angle measures but not the third. So angle T might be the largest or the smallest angle. Let's find out by using the triangle angle sum theorem. So the measure of angle T plus 120 will equal 180. Use the subtraction property of equality and the measure of angle T will equal 60. Since we're putting our sides in order from shortest to longest, we want to find the smallest angle. Since angle U is the smallest angle, side TV, the side opposite angle U, will be the shortest side. The next smallest angle is angle T, which is 60 degrees, so the side opposite angle T would be T side UV. Since the largest angle is angle V with 62 degrees, the side opposite angle V, side TU, would be the longest side. So we've put our sides in order from shortest to longest in triangle TUV. Pause the video and do you try number three. In triangle SOX, the measure of angle S is 24 and the measure of angle O is 130. Which side of triangle SOX is the shortest side? Explain your reasoning. Let's start by finding the measure of angle X by using the triangle angle sum theorem. Now that we know the measure of angle X is 26 degrees, we can see that the smallest angle is angle S. So the side shortest in triangle SOX would be the side opposite angle S or side OX. For three segments to form a triangle, their lengths must be related in a certain way. Notice that only one of these sets of segments form a triangle. Can you figure out why the sides in the second figure do not form a triangle? Can you figure out the relationship between the length of a triangle's sides? The triangle inequality theorem explains that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. So the length of segment XY plus the length of segment YZ must be longer than the length of segment XZ, or like this triangle, the two sides here won't meet. The same thing is true for the sum of the length of segment YX and XZ. They must be longer together than the length of segment YZ. Also, the length of segment XZ and the length of segment ZY must have a sum greater than the length of segment YX. In example 4, we will use the triangle inequality theorem. Can a triangle have sides with the given lengths? Explain. Let's start by looking at the three possible lengths of the side of the triangle. In order to save us some work, let's look at this logically. Since I need any two sides to be longer than the third, I know that 8 is the longest side of 3, 7, and 8. Since 8 is already longer than 3, anything I add to 8, 7, is going to be longer than 3. Since 8 is already longer than 7, then anything I add to 8 will still be longer than 7. So let's add the two shorter sides. If they are longer than the longest side, then our triangle will work. Since 3 plus 7 is 10 and 10 is greater than 8, then yes, these three sides will form a triangle. Now let's take a look at part B. Since our three possible side lengths are 5 feet, 10 feet, and 15 feet, we want to add the shorter two sides and see if they have a length that is greater than the longest side. Since 5 plus 10 equals 15 and 15 is not greater than 15, it is equal to, 
then no, these three will not form a triangle. Pause the video and do you try number four. Can a triangle have sides with the given lengths? Explain. In part A, since two meters and six meters are shorter, let's add these two to see if they have a sum that is longer than nine meters. Since two plus six equals eight, and eight is not greater than nine, then no, six, two, and nine cannot be the lengths of the sides of a triangle. In part B, our side lengths are four, six, and nine. Let's take a look at the shorter two, four and six, and see if they have a sum that is longer than nine. Since four plus six equals 10, and 10 is greater than nine, yes, these three sides can form a triangle. In example five, we will find possible side lengths. For a town's playground, we have two sides of what will be a triangular sandbox. What is the range of possible lengths for the third side? We know that any two sides of a triangle must have a sum that is longer than that third side. So we know that if we add 8 plus 5, it must be longer than the third side. Since 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 is the highest number of our range, so x must be less than 13. We also know that if 5 plus our missing side has to have a sum greater than 8, so let's subtract 5 from 8 to find the low end of our range. Since 8 minus 5 is 3, we know that 3 has to be less than x, or the length of our third side. So we know that our third side must be less than 13, but greater than 3. So let's rewrite our inequality like this. 3 is less than x, but x is less than 13. Pause the video and do you try number 5. A triangle has side lengths of 4 inches and 7 inches. What is the range of possible lengths for the third side? To find the high end of our range, let's add the two side lengths we have now. To find the low end of our range, let's subtract 4 from 7. We now know that x must be greater than 3 but less than 11. So let's rewrite our inequality where 3 is less than x but x is less than 11. Now's your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and complete the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If there's a question you don't understand, please be sure to ask me in class. If you're really confident about the lesson, go ahead and give the challenge a try. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since we began the lesson.